Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, where today we actually have to deal with a lame cow. We've got a cow out there in the field who's got a bad leg, and we're going to bring her into the chutes, take a look at her, and see what we can do to help her out. It's coming up today on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> All right, guys, we have a little bit of a challenge today that you're going to come along and help me with, and that is that we do have a lame cow, number 130. She's about a 10-year-old cow, and she's having a few problems. What our plan is for today is to head out with the four-wheeler and find her. I know where she's at. I actually tried to feed them in. Didn't work. Uh, that's one of the problems when we have such nice weather in December is the cows want to be cows. They want to be out on pasture, and right now they're on a 400-acre pasture that we call the home pasture, and they don't think they need food. So feeding them is not a regular one-a-day thing right now. Um, we actually feed them about every other day. Usually they come in. Today they decided they didn't want to, so we have to go to them. One thing that we do have going for us is that we have a few decoy cows here. I call them that because when we bring in the rest of the herd, the hope is that they're gonna see them. Now, these are our younger cows. These guys saw me come in with food. They came running. Uh, Bambi's in there with them because apparently she's some sort of babysitter or something. Um, but the cow that we need is not in here. It was kind of my hope that she would be, but of course, you know, laws of percentages and Murphy's Law and all that stuff. She's still pretty far back. They did see me come in with food, so there is a chance they could be working this way but we're gonna have to go back and take a look at her and uh, get behind her and kind of move her in. This is what we call the lot. It's about three acres as compared to 400 acres, makes it a whole lot easier to sort off cows. And I've found over time that if you bring in the whole herd, it is easier to get those cows sorted off. I've tried hundreds of times to sort off one single cow. Doesn't really seem to, to work very well. So if we can get a majority of them in here and then get her sorted off, that'll make our life a whole lot easier. big problem is that when I went out and found them this morning, they were about a mile away. So it's a little bit of a walk for a cow that has a bad leg. Sometimes I'll call it a bad pin, but um, we don't know what's wrong with her. And that's the reason we want to bring her in. We want to take a look at her leg. It could be something as simple as she has something in her hoof that we could help her out with. It could be as bad as hoof rot, which is something that we don't want to deal with but we're never gonna know out in the pasture. And this is part of animal husbandry. You wanna make sure that your animals are as healthy as possible and as comfortable as possible, especially when they're out walking around and having a bad leg, having to move around for food and stuff like that is not gonna do her any good. She is pregnant, therefore we do wanna keep her until she has her calf at least, even if she does have a bad leg. So we've got a few uh, contingency plans in place for that, but first, I really do think we just need to get a look at her. So we have about 70 cows out here in this pasture right now. Uh, it looks like they're kind of split up between three groups. I want them to work from the farthest back, or at least from the cow that we're looking for and I don't see her yet. But it looks like that might be her right there. I see a cow with a little bit of a limp. She's right there behind Cracker Jack. We're gonna swing over and take a look here. All right, so here she is. This is the cow that we're looking for. You can see that back left leg. She's putting uh, very, very little weight on and uh, she's definitely not happy with us about it. That's for sure. Uh, we are going to try to get all these guys in and then get her sorted off up into the chute where we can take a look at her. 
some days that can be easier said than done. It's uh, probably in the 40s right now. I don't know what the exact temperature is, but these guys definitely don't want to come in. You can see they're laying out here in the pasture. They're pretty content, but we have to get them up into the corral so we can take care of her. So we're going to inconvenience 69 cows in order to take care of one. Come on, guys. Time to get up. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go home. So we are technically just worried about her. So if we leave some cows behind, it's not that bad of a deal. But if we leave too many behind, she's gonna turn around and see those cows back there, and she's gonna wanna go back to them. Trust me, it happens every single time. So if we can get a majority of them going, um, it does make a little, life a little bit easier when it comes time to sort her off. We don't have a whole bunch of cows to deal with, but getting a majority of them is pretty paramount to trying to do this. So. I think they know where they're going, it's just a matter of they don't want to go there. Come on guys. Come on. That's her up there, she's trying to get away from us. Come on, girl. Be careful. Be careful. Don't hurt yourself anymore. I think if we can get her in this group, we might be okay. A majority of our other cows are actually over on the other side of that road. So chances are she won't be able to see them. If we can keep her up with this group, it'll make life easier when it comes time to sort. If we have to sort her off of, you know, 20 cows instead of 70 cows it'll make life a little bit easier so as long as she's going the right direction i'm pretty happy and i can still see her she's right up there moving along she's not moving horribly bad for having a bad leg which is a good sign we noticed about three or four days ago that she was starting to limp um, we've kind of kept an eye on her since then, but it's not really getting any better. Um, it's not getting any worse either, but it's definitely worth looking at. So a little proactive measure is definitely not a bad thing when it comes to your cattle, especially when you're thinking about, you know, calves that could be potentially worth $3,000 once they're into the feedlot. So we want to make sure that uh, both her and her calf are as healthy as we can get them. The nice part about this too is that we have Cracker Jack in this group. He's uh, our lead steer, so he will be able to help make these cows feel better, hopefully, uh, with wherever they're going. This is a really good example of how uh, you come out with one plan, that plan changes. You have to be able to adapt. Um, obviously, I don't need to bring all the cows. It makes my life easier, but at the same time, um, we do cause more problems by having less cows if they happen to decide to turn around and go back to those other cows. So uh, being able to adapt as we go, change our plans, it's a big part of ranching. It's a big part of life. But uh, for this circumstance, I think it's actually working pretty well. A few more, looks like calves coming back to join us. I think they're of the opinion that uh, they think something cool is going to happen. <laughs> they just, they just want to be a part of the in crowd. As you can see, a lot of cows back behind us. I'm actually trying to ditch those guys as we go. These guys are definitely moving in the right direction, so I don't need everybody else. I don't need the help. I'm sure we're going to have plenty of it once we get up here. The closer we get to the gate, we can actually start sorting off some more of these cows. Cracker Jack can stay back. We're gonna move forward. We're gonna just kind of pass these cows by and kind of give them the signal that they don't need to be here. You can see our lame ones right there. She's the one we want. Right in front of us. Now 
where she's going to go. I'd like to get her in this gate or the gate down this way, but we'll see what she does. She's got a partner in crime there. Makes her feel a little bit better. All right. Okay, so this is where our decoy cows are going to come in handy. We've got them back there on the food. As we move these guys towards the lot, which is that three-acre little area that I was telling you guys about earlier, the hope is that they will see those cows and they'll move towards them. This is where we have the potential to lose some cows. They've got to make a, a weird jog around this gate. And we've got to get them to drop back in, which we have done. So now, rather than sorting off 70 cows or 69 cows, we only have 15 or so. Makes life a lot easier. Everybody else, however, is going to miss breakfast for right now. And my four-wheeler's dead. Well, this makes life a little interesting. Huh, that's new. Got no power. Maybe it's a battery problem. Maybe we just have a loose connection. Maybe. Yep, loose connection. That's something else to put on the list. Well, could have been worse. Could have been worse. That's for sure. Okay, we're gonna head up here and hopefully uh, we've got her pretty close to the gate. I don't know, we're gonna find out. I've got the gate open. I actually put some feed inside the pen uh, to kind of get some of these guys to come in and water is down here also. So that could be a deciding factor. But it's not because she's right there with everybody else. Hey girly. Okay, we're gonna see if we can move her towards the corral where we want her. So there's some other cows down there, which is nice. That'll help us out a little bit. Come on, girl. Go see your friends down there. Yeah, see those guys? Go see what they're up to. Nope, not that way. Other way. There you go. Look at that. We've got her in. Now we're only dealing with uh, six cows. This will make life a little easier. Looks like three of them we can get out of here right away. Come on, get, get out. And then we've got her and two others down here to deal with. You stay, mama. You stay. No, you're going to stay here. You don't have to leave. Hey, no. Your friend there can go, though. No. 38, get out of here. Come on, girls. 38, you can leave. No, you stay in 130. I know you're mad at me. You stay in. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't work. I didn't feel like getting run over today. So, let's go back and try again. Come on. Turn around, Mama. Go back that way. Come on. Come on, you stinkers. And 
she's gonna go hide in the bar in the shed here. Try to get her to turn back around that corner. Woo. Okay, get back in there. Get back in there. Hey, don't go back there. Urgh. You dumb cow. And I just killed the four-wheeler. Dang it. And there she goes. We're gonna get her. Come on. Hup, hup. Somebody go with her, that would be helpful. Come on guys, come on. Let's go. Come on, go see the chickens. There you go, Mama. Come on. Come on, Mom. So when we get her going the way we want to, we actually let off pressure so that she will walk quietly into the corral where we need her. Look at that. <sighs> Told you we'd get her. Okay. Close another gate. Probably shouldn't turn off the four. <laughs> And she's now in here by herself. What we need to do is get her up into the aero quip. Uh, we're gonna end up putting her into the chute where we can take a look at her foot. You can tell she's not happy. It probably hurts. We do have some medication for her that will help with that, but we need to get her into a confined space to do that. So first off, I'm gonna get this gate open. And I think the best place to move her into is right here. and into this corral. It's our first stop in the aero quip, and hopefully uh, she'll be okay with that. She moves really quick for only having three legs. Okay. This is the trick. Getting them in that little tiny alley. Come on, girl. Come on, mama. Come on, don't be mad at me. Come on, mama. You know where I want you to go. Oh, gosh. Are you okay? See, that's what I was afraid of. That's uh, unfortunate, because that's probably how she hurt herself in the first place. Maybe. Come on, go down that alley. Get in there. Nope. There we go. Good girl. Good girl. All right, we've got her here in the corral. Now that she's in here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the gate closed, obviously, and then I'm gonna give her a few minutes just to kind of chill out. Getting here for her was probably painful. You can tell she's not in the best mood. Um, and it's, uh, I'm sorry, you wanna smell my hand? No, you don't wanna smell my hand. Uh, she's not in the best mood, obviously, so it's probably better to just kinda of let her chill for a little bit. She's gonna be annoyed. Uh, she's gonna be even more annoyed once we bring her into the chute. So give her five or 10 minutes, probably 10 minutes at least, to, uh, to kinda of settle down, catch her wind. And what I'm also gonna do is open up a gate so she can get to water. Come on, girl, come on. And maybe she's gonna grab a drink, maybe not. Again, not her favorite person right now, but we are gonna try to make her feel better.
All right, she's had about 10 or 15 minutes to settle down over here. I think most of the rodeo is probably over with, not exactly sure. But what I can do is go ahead and open up a couple gates. And we're gonna see if we can use some of her, her own angst against her and move her up towards the chute. So let's see what she does here. I don't wanna push her too hard. You can see that she's mad enough now that she's actually ignoring that foot, pretty much. Come on, girl. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Move your butt. Come on. Okie dokie. <laughs> we may have to play a little rodeo clown here now. I could go jump back on the four-wheeler, which would probably be the safest thing to do. But I would rather just have her get up into some of these corrals and out of our way. Come on. Okay, now she's coming out. Come on, cow. Come on. Quit fronting. I'm trying to help you. I swear to God I am. Come on, Mom. Come over here. Get. Don't turn back on me, Mom. All right, well, we are on the wrong side, so we're gonna switch to the outside of the corral on the other side. Hopefully get her to come up through that gate and then be able to get it closed behind her so she can move into the tub. Sounds like a great plan, right? Come on, Mom. Come on. Get up there. All right, now we got our even, even smaller area. We're just whittling down here. Yeah. Not a happy camper. Come on, Mom. Move your butt up. You gotta keep moving. Come on. Come on, Mom. Keep going. A little farther. Just have a little farther to go. Okay, now we got her even in a smaller area. And then she's gonna move up into the alley, even a smaller area. She does not like us whatsoever. And close this gate behind her. Now we've got her locked here in the the pre-pen, I guess is what you could call it. Everything is secure, ready to go for her to come in to the chute. Come on in, girl. Okay, now we've got her in the chute. I'm gonna close this because I don't trust her. There you go. And she is now in the chute. So, one of the big things that I wanna know right off the bat is how much she weighs. And this is gonna dictate any type of medication that we're gonna give to her, but also, um, it's good to just keep track of these kind of records. So my scale is here. She weighs 1,410 pounds. That would have hurt running me over. <sighs> Luckily she didn't. I'm gonna jump onto my app here uh, where I keep track of everything. It's called Cattle Max and I can pull her up. We can see if she's gained or lost weight, which is actually a pretty good indication of how um, she's doing physically. So I'm gonna pull up her information. There she is. I'm gonna go into performance. She has actually lost some weight, not a lot. Um, what did we say? 1410. Last time she was weighed, she weighed 1495. So she has lost a little bit of weight. Not really uncommon for this type, but she has lost 
since we last weighed her, and this is the big indication, since we last weighed her, she has, she has lost 1.6 pounds per day. So that's not good. Um, her losing weight is not a good sign. So now that we know what she weighs, we can go get her some medication, but we still have to take a look at that foot. That's coming up and that's gonna be a little spooky. Um, but we can run to the shop, we'll grab some medication for her. This is my medicine cabinet. Um, every rancher probably keeps one uh, somewhere along the line and we are going to be giving her a um, couple different medications. Now I'm gonna talk about some other ones that we could give her for this, but the, uh, if I could find it, maybe I don't have any anyway. So I think I would. Oh, there it is. Okay. So with, a, with an injury like this, um, there is a slight chance that it could be hoof rot. If it's hoof rot, we want to give her antibiotics. Um, if she has any type of infection or anything like that, we want to make sure that we give her antibiotics. We'll probably take her temperature today too, just to make sure uh, that she's not running a temperature. Because if she is, then it's a good, good sign that she has some sort of infection. Um, I have banamine here. Now, banamine is actually used for inflammation. This will actually um, help her out with some of the pain relief. Um, in the olden days or you know, a few years ago, uh, we would have given her LA-200, which is li uh, liquamycin, which is an antibiotic. Um, the problem with this is that it's a massive dose. For a cow her size, she would need about 140 cc's. That's a lot, and that's a lot of needles. Um, with Exceed, uh, which is another antibiotic, and it's a five-day course antibiotic, um, we only have to give her 14 cc's. So a big difference there. This stuff is more expensive. Um, it's going to cost you about $200 for this little tiny bottle. But uh, the fact that you don't have to keep on giving them doses and you don't have to give that large of a dose makes a really big difference. So we're going to load up some syringes for her and uh, then head back out, take a look at her hoof, do all the things we need to do. All right, for banamine, We'll start out with banamine. Um, dosage here is going to be 14 cc's or milliliters. And again, this should make her feel a whole lot better. reduce some of that swelling and everything else we have to deal with. For the Exceed, uh, the calculations are a little bit tougher, but it works out at 1.5 milliliter per 45 kilograms of cow. So for us, that means, do a little math. She's 639 kilograms, 639. Well, we'll just call it 640 divided by 45 times 1.5 comes right in close to 20 milliliters or cc's of exceed. So there's our medication that we're gonna need for her today, banamine and exceed. The other thing we'll do is take her temperature. Um, pretty hard to keep a cow to keep a thermometer underneath their tongue, so we'll do it rectally, which is super fun. But I do wanna check, make sure she doesn't have an elevated temperature. Um, that would be an indication of some sort of infection or something like that that's going on in there. Um, the banamine will actually deal with that, but, uh, it's just kind of nice to know. So the other thing that we do with her is everything that we do to her, we're actually logging in the Cattle Max program as well, so that we know exactly what we gave her for dosages of what and when. Are you feeling any better? No, she's not feeling a lick better. In order to protect ourselves, we're gonna make sure everything is set up here the way we need it. And now 
we're gonna try to get her in the head chute. This will lock her head down, hopefully make her a little bit easier to deal with. Come on, put your head in. Come on, mama. Step back just a little bit. Wow, she's a big cow. We're also gonna put a little squeeze on her, and I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to do that, but this bar allows me to squeeze the chute down just a little bit, put a little bit of pressure against her, which then makes them feel better too. She's calm somewhat, um, which is good. So I think we'll start at one end and we'll work our way towards the other. And the first end we're gonna mess around with is with the thermometer here. And we are gonna try to get her temperature. Again, she's not gonna be happy about this. Neither am I, but that's okay. Hold still, Mom. Okay, so a normal cow's temperature runs about 101 degrees. Let me get her tail out of the way here. Hey, 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 hey. She is running about 105. 104.6 right there. So that tells me that there is a chance that she could have some sort of infection. Also, she's a little worked up right now, but um, it's definitely not a good indication of what we've got going on here. Um, we're gonna give her her medications, but I also wanna look at that foot. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Uh, we can duck into the back of the chute here. We're gonna sneak out behind her. Now, really quick, I'd like to take a look at this side. Just to, just to look at this hoof as well and look at the, the hoof that we're looking at from the other side. So, again, we're not seeing any redness. We're not seeing any swelling. Um, it looks to be okay if we can see the hooves from the front. We're not seeing anything down and inside there. Usually you'd be able to see some redness in there. Even on the other hoof, everything looks okay. She's not happy, but I'm gonna say that based on what we're seeing here, it's not a hoof problem. Um, I would say that she probably fell at some point and may have actually landed on that side, hurt that, hurt that hip is kind of what I'm thinking. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get her her medications and then we're gonna get her out of here. Uh, these are actually pretty big doses. When you're looking at stuff that's like 20, you know, 20 milliliters, that's a lot to put in one injection site on the cow. So I like to do multiples. Um, I might split this over three for the Exceed. Banamine, I'll probably split over at least two injection sites. All of these are subcutaneous, both of these guys are. So it means they're just underneath the skin, which is fine. They could go intermuscular. Um, they're, they're gonna do about the same good either way as far as I've heard. So all we have to do is get these injections into her without, you know, breaking our own arm. The AeroQuip has a handy little injection site door here. And I'm gonna start out with the Banamine. And we're just gonna do this in a couple different injection spots. Split it up over two, makes it really simple. Wait for her to settle down a little bit. And there's the banamine. The banamine should help her feel better. Again, that's an anti-inflammatory, so if she does have any swelling, ligaments, joints, anything like that, it'll definitely help out. Uh, this is our antibiotic. If she has any infection anywhere, even in her hooves that we couldn't have seen, um, this will actually take care of that as well. And again, this is a five or a seven day, if I remember right. Actually, it can go as, it can go as long as 13, um, depending on the size of the animal. So let's uh, get this in here. And this is a thicker type of medication. So that's why I like to split it up over a few different injection points. All within this triangle that we want to inject in, which is the neck triangle right here. It just goes kind of like that. We'll do one more. 
subcutaneous underneath the skin and inject it. Once again, we're not making any friends on the ranch here, but that's okay. Um, she is gonna go out here with those other cows. They're gonna have to deal with her crankiness. I'm not going to. Um, we're gonna take the squeeze off of her and then I'll open up the head gate. So this is something that a lot of folks, uh, there's different rules of thought to this, whether you take the squeeze off first or you open the head gate first. I've heard it done either way. Honestly, I probably switch it up quite a bit. Mostly just trying to figure out what works better. The theory is that if you leave the squeeze on them, you open up the head gate, they're gonna move forward easier. Um, I don't think we're gonna have any problem with her getting out of this head chute. Ready, girl? And there she goes. Number 130 seems to have something going on, not exactly sure what. And that lame foot on the left, obviously we looked at both feet. Sometimes it's hard to tell which foot a cow is lame on, um, the way that they're walking. But we did look at everything. We looked at all her, all, both feet. We looked at her, her knees, her ankles, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I think that this will actually help her out. But here's the thing. We are going to keep her in for quite a while, actually, um, so that we can see exactly how she progresses and how she does. Um, sometimes it's easier to see uh, feet. Remember this from the other side of the chute. So when you're working on one side of the chute, if you're working on feet or at least looking at, at their hooves, um, sometimes it's easier to look from the other side of the chute as well. And that's what we kind of took care of here. Uh, but you do want to check as long as you've got them in, you might as well check it out as much as you can. So these guys, they're back together. But really, it's all about keeping these cows happy. I guarantee you, she's gonna feel better with that shot of banamine. It's gonna loosen up some muscles or ligaments or anything else she might have damaged. The antibiotics will help with any infection that might be caused. Um, if it is a hoof, foot, hoof problem that we weren't able to see from either side of the chute, um, hopefully that'll take care of it. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot else that we can really do for her at this point. Um, we do have her closed in now. This will make her life a little bit easier. She doesn't have to walk up and down 400 acres to get food. She's got food, she's got water all within uh, just about 50 feet. So that'll make her life a lot easier to help her heal up. And then eventually, hopefully she can go back out to the herd where she can have her calf. But for right now, she is definitely not too happy about being here in the corral. She'll get used to it, trust me. All right, we will check back in with her a little bit later. We've got more videos on the way. I hope you guys have a great Christmas planned. And uh, I'll probably take Monday off from videos. We'll be back on Thursday with a brand new video. I've got the gator back. And over the last uh, couple weeks, you guys have been suggesting what I need to have in the gator to make my life easier. Well, we're gonna stock her back up and with a lot of your guys' suggestions. So be sure to subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Try not to get run over by cows right here on our Wyoming Life.